The story kicks off with a YouTuber named Pagano launching a live stream to celebrate his channel hitting 700,000 subscribers. Joining him is Rumi, a fellow classmate and beauty tip YouTuber. They decide to showcase Rumi's makeup skills on a model, who happens to be our main character, Hoban. Unfortunately, Hoban despises these YouTubers and wishes they would at least share some of the revenue for humiliating him like this. Peidike Jo gets irritated with Hoban and reminds him that he should be grateful for his viewers. Towards the end of the stream, P.A. Kigyo announces a giveaway of a brand new PC for one lucky subscriber, but Hoban sees through the facade and knows it's just a scam. As the stream comes to a close, Hoban forces himself to put on a smile. Hoban struggles with removing all the makeup and openly admits to disliking school these days. Pei Kyo, a troublemaker and YouTuber with 700,000 subscribers, may have terrible grades, but he knows how to make money. Ruby, on the other hand, is a new YouTuber who relies on her appearance to sustain herself. Hoban becomes frustrated when comparing himself to them because he is neither wealthy nor intelligent. Upon returning to class, he discovers that a student named Snapper is furious with him for not smiling during the live stream. Snapper, who happens to be Paco's cameraman, belongs to the troublemaking group at school. Hoban considers standing up for himself, but the others simply mock him. Paco believes he is overreacting while Snapper pretends to be scared to the point of almost wetting himself. Hoban thinks about how Snapper volunteered to be Paco's cameraman so he could piggyback on his authority. It's a pretty spineless move, but Hoban concedes that Snapper is a good strategist. Snapper wonders if Hoban wants more, but Hoban just concedes that this is the school's pecking order and he is at the bottom. Just then, Rumi is amazed to learn that she was able to make $200 from the stream they just did. Hoban is shocked to hear this since they barely did anything but still managed to make $200 during lunch break. It's all thanks to PA Kitty Joe, Rumi promises to repay him somehow. Hoban is contemplating the idea of starting his own YouTube channel, and he is taken aback when Snapper expresses the same desire. Curious for advice, Snap returns to Paco, who explains that minors cannot receive revenue and suggests using his parents' bank account. However, Snapper's past incident of taking his parents' money makes it impossible for them to allow him to use their account. Aware that Hoban's mom is unwell and hospitalized, Snapper decides to use his mom's account instead. This behavior of Snapper's is met with laughter from everyone and Hoban contemplates using his fists to defend his mother. Unfortunately, he cannot bring himself to do it and instead apologizes to his mother for not standing up for her. Hoban pays a visit to his mother, trying to maintain a positive attitude by pretending that she can return home whenever she wants. However, Hoban is aware that this is not true, as her condition would worsen if she left the hospital. He notices the marks on Hoban's face and wonders if he got into a fight. Hoban denies it, assuring his mother that he would never do something like that. He doesn't want to worry her by revealing the truth about how things are at school. Reflecting on this, Hoban realizes that he is also a liar. Hoban then goes to pay $200 for his mother's medical treatment, realizing that it amounts to an entire week's worth of pay from his part-time job at Whack Donald's. Even if he worked every day after school, it would still take a significant amount of time to earn that much money. He would only earn around $30 per day, while his fellow YouTubers could make $200 in just one lunch break. Hoban becomes enraged and questions what is wrong with society. As he falls into despair, Hoban suddenly finds a glimmer of hope when his co-worker named Bomi greets him. Hoban informs her about the location of the beef patties and offers to get them for her. Bomi is like an idol in the restaurant and simply seeing her brings joy to Hoban's heart. Just then, P.A. Kigyo arrives at the restaurant while live streaming. Hoban quickly hides while P.A. Kigyo reveals that he is there to meet the social media sensation, the goddess of Whack Donalds. Hoban was taken aback when he arrived to see Bomi and Paco announce that he had a challenge for her. If she couldn't make a hamburger in 30 seconds, she would have to give him her number. Hoban dreaded this moment because he knew exactly what Paco was up to. The burger had more than 10 ingredients, making it impossible to prepare in such a short time. It was obvious that Paco was just trying to get Bomi's phone number. Paco pretended he didn't want to go through with the challenge, but claimed his viewers had pressured him into it. The other workers pointed out that they didn't have Bomi's contact information and questioned if YouTubers could do whatever they please. Tensions mounted, but everyone was surprised when Hoban revealed that he had successfully made the burger. He went the extra mile and even gave an additional patty for free. As a result, he politely asked P.A. Kijio to leave as their presence was disturbing other customers. The situation has been resolved and Hoban quietly whispers to himself, feeling like the king of McDonald's. The others commend him for a job well done. However, Hoban knows that there may be consequences at school as he might get beaten up for his actions. He doesn't believe that anyone would truly accept him for who he is. Despite this, he manages to catch Bomi's attention. 
Back at home, Hoban prepares some ramen and we witness his lack of assertiveness as he allows Snapper to stream from his house. Hoban is disappointed in himself and apologizes to his mom for letting Snapper use her bank account. He overhears that someone is going to pay Snapper $200 for achieving 30 kills, and he curses Snapper for making such easy money. Hoban is so frustrated that he even spits in Snapper's ramen. Snapper coerced him into doing it, so Hoban ponders whether he should approach Snapper about sharing some of the earnings. Just then, Hoban accidentally trips over an extension cord causing Snapper's stream to disconnect and drenching him in scalding hot ramen. Hoban immediately apologizes for the mishap, but Snapper is livid about losing out on $200. Hoban reiterates that it was purely an accident, but Snapper responds by hurling insults and relentlessly kicking him. In that moment, Hoban starts to realize how pathetic it is to be beaten up in his own home. The beatdown continues, but Hoban's anger surges when Snapper cruelly blames him for his mom's cancer. Hoban retaliates with a swift punch to Snapper's face, marking the first time he has ever struck someone. The two engage in a fight, and Hoban comes to the realization that fighting isn't as significant as he had always believed. They fight without holding back, unaware that the livestream camera is still recording. Somewhere else, a girl from their school is watching the stream. After the altercation, the general settles down and starts to feel the pain. It's not the only problem, as he discovers that repairing the house will require money. Hoban despises constantly worrying about finances and decides to escape his troubles by sleeping. At that moment, Hoban comes to the realization of how unhappy he truly is. He still frets about the upcoming electricity bill, so he switches off a nearby power strip. The following morning, Snapper calls him in a rage, demanding that you remove a video. Hoban is puzzled, but Snapper clarifies that he must delete the YouTube live stream from the previous day. Hoban mentions that the stream cut off when he tripped over the cable, but then he realizes that the cord he unplugged was only for the monitor, not the computer. Snapper is in tears as he confesses that their entire argument was broadcasted live from the camera. The screen went black, but the stream was still going, and it was even turned into a video. Hoban denies uploading it, but Snapper points out that YouTube doesn't do it automatically if a PC goes offline during a live stream. Snapper can't delete it himself because it's on Hoban's mom's account. Snapper asks for the password, but the panicked Hoban ignores him to verify if it's true. Hoban is shocked to discover that it's all true and the video already has over 10,000 comments. It has spread to other social media platforms, and it's evident that the video has gone viral worldwide overnight. Hoban thinks it's terrible since he is going from just being bullied locally to being bullied globally. He prepares to delete the video before things get worse, but he reads some comments about how much money it will make because it has so many views. YouTube pays a little over half a penny for every view so Hoban does the calculations, and he's stunned to realize that this 10 million view video will make a little over $6,000. At school, students laugh the fight in the video. Snapper arrives and realizes they have seen it feeling furious as his efforts to become popular are ruined. Determined not to be the laughing stock, Snapper chooses an easy target to bully. Confidently, he tries to assert himself and regain his status, but it backfires as the target fights back. Snapper pleads for P.A. Kijo's help, but P.A. Kijo shows no interest. Snapper has spent his entire life pushing people around, so it's pretty clear to him that he won't be able to change his new reputation as the joke of the town. At the hospital, Hoban is shocked to receive an $800 medical bill. However, Hoban takes it in stride and confidently pays it off, knowing that he has over $6,000 coming in soon from a video. Just then, Snapper shows up and punches him in the face, claiming that he deserves half the money because he's the laughing stock of the school. Hoban refuses, and the two start fighting again. Hoban, having already fought Snapper once, is no longer scared. After the fight, Hoban tries to make Snapper feel better but still refuses to give him any of the money. Suddenly, Snapper reveals that he recorded their fight and planned the whole thing, showcasing his impressive camera skills while hiding the camera. Hoban worries that Snapper will upload the video himself, but Snapper points out that nobody would watch the same recycled content. It would simply argue that it was all planned and insult them for creating the video. Snapper didn't come to fight Hoban, he came to ask Hoban to join forces with him. Snapper offers to help him make even more money, which astonishes Hoban at the idea of being able to earn the same kind of money again. Snapper mentions that he used to be Paco's producer, so he could do the same for Hoban. Snapper is aware that Hoban hasn't received any money from the video yet and explains that there are several complex steps to monetize on YouTube, including a screening process. But that's not all, Snapper bombards Hoban with questions about who will film and edit his videos. Snapper emphasizes that Paco's success is solely attributed to his meticulous planning and exceptional camera work. He proposes to become Paco's producer, assuring him that all he needs to do is show up. 
Snapper urges Paco to trust him, so they can both profit from their collaboration. Paco envisions the immense wealth he can accumulate. Unbeknownst to Paco, Snapper is a cunning strategist who recognizes that he has Paco exactly where he wants him. Snapper's true intention is to exploit Paco for his own gain, enabling him to ascend the hierarchy once again. Curious about the financial arrangement, Paco inquires about the money split. Snapper asserts that he will handle all the management responsibilities, emphasizing their newfound friendship. Consequently, Snapper decides that he will receive 90% of the revenue while Paco will only receive 10%. As they prepare to shake hands, the malevolent Snapper contemplates how Paco will toil away while he effortlessly rises to the top. However, it seems that Hoban is actually quite clever. He turns down the offer and firmly tells Snapper that they are not friends. Snapper realizes that Hoban is crucial to his idea as if he proposes a 50-50th split. Hoban refuses once more, suggesting he would rather work at a fast food joint. Panicking, Snapper offers to only take 10% while Hoban keeps the rest. Our brilliant negotiator protagonist finally agrees and eagerly anticipates hearing Snapper's new content idea. Snapper is upset that Hoban is not as foolish as he assumed, but he is relieved they reached an agreement. He then surprises everyone by revealing the new content will focus on calling out bullies in real life. That's where this video ends. You have to click on the right to see its next part. And to see best anime recap on my channel, you have to click on the left. If you like the video, like it and subscribe to see more contents of this.